Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Michael Alasso, who is in, who is on the southern coast of Maine in another beautiful part of the world. How are you doing, Michael? I'm excited to be here. May the questions never stop. Because when you're with John Golden, you can hear the sales pop. <laughs> hey, John, I'm here. I'm having a great time. Uh, fantastic. I told you, the, wow, that's our jingle. We haven't had a jingle. Now we have a jingle. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. And um, absolutely. And Michael is a master communications expert and self awareness specialist who coaches CEOs, teams, and individuals on day-to-day -day communication, dynamic presentations, and leadership excellence. And what we want to talk about today is just you, know, you on your best day of an interesting, an interesting concept about how you how you show up on your best day. And the first thing, Michael, uh, I'm really fascinated by the self-awareness specialist piece of what you do because I do believe that you know self-awareness is the greatest key to freedom, prosperity just a, a good life in general, but it's kind of, it's a difficult thing to achieve or seems like a difficult thing to achieve, or we come to it, um, or we come to it too late, or we don't even understand what self-awareness really is. So there's about 50 questions piled into one statement for you. What's your Especially thoughts? Especially when you're, when you're in the executive track, John, people never give you any feedback. So you live in this mm -hmm. vacuum and no one's telling you what they authentically see and hear. So I've been able to make a business simply sitting in rooms, standing in rooms on screens, telling people what I see and hear. It was interesting because when I was locked down for 59 weeks, because when you live in New England, there really mm -hmm. is COVID. So you really do get locked down, unlike other parts of the country. And so I pivoted and I created You and Your Best Day became You and Your Best Zoom Day. So I assimilated mm -hmm. all my film TV background into the coaching executives and giving keynotes and being a stand-up comic, combined them all in one. What was interesting, and it, it, it bled over, I went back on the road April 29, 2021. Now about 70% of my workshops and keynotes are in person. The big thing people say as I'm leaving, if the John Golden person, the CEO of the company says, hey, Quick rapid recall, tell Michael something you took away today. What's interesting, John, the most dominant thing I'm hearing is I felt seen and heard today. So, yeah. And the first time someone said that to me, I said, Really? I have eyes and ears. Is that all you can say? Then I thought about it. John, what does that imply? By and large, people are feeling unseen, unheard. And subsequently, their self awareness goes down the tubes because they, they're they not getting a feedback about how they are being, how they are performing. And the, the virtual exact, exacerbated that because people got lazy, they turned off their cameras and they did not see people they did not hear. So yeah. we had no idea how we come across. I always say this, and I don't mean it as any kind of cliche, but self-awareness is 50% of the battle. If, if you yeah. are aware of your challenges, man, there's a great chance we're going to get through those obstacles and turn them into opportunities. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. But here's the here's the part of the challenges I see it today, Michael. Number one is, you know, self-awareness isn't spoken about enough or, or understood enough. And the second thing is we live in this strange culture of, uh, of, of you know, just com continual distraction. So you don't have to spend any time with yourself. So you don't have to you know, it do any kind of introspection or any kind of feedback because you have something else to distract you. And, and we're, we're constantly moving and, and we're, we're very busy, even though I say we're very distracted rather than very busy. But it seems like there's, there's contrary forces at work, if you like. Yeah, that's why I developed this thing, John, I call my 35 secret weapons to help you be you in your best day. There are pragmatic ways to heighten your self-awareness, to maximize your performance. And so I, I came up with 35 of them. And that's what I go on the road and help people implement those 35. Number two is focus and concentration. It's what we call in theater being in the moment. Mm -hmm. Athletes call it being in the zone. 
So in other words, John, if you and I are doing a scene in a comic play and we're playing the scene and the audience laughs, we don't look up and say, oh, that was funny. Oh, and get back into we say in the moment. Yeah, yeah. Doing a love scene in a movie, there's probably a boom mic over our head, a camera person on our face, script supervisor right next to us. You have to stay in the moment in order to make the scene believable. What this is all about is being believable, being authentic. That's the most important word. It's your best authentic self, though. So I call it you on your best day. It's not you on John Golden's best day, you on Michael Olazzo's best day. It's you on your best day. What does that look like? So in order to be self-aware, in order to be 100% authentic, I think you need to be 100% intentional. So in other words, if you tell me, John, your life partner is the most important person on God's earth. And when you leave this podcast, you go out and the first thing you do is check your emails. Second thing you do uh, <laughs> is open your snail mail. Third thing you do is get a snack. And then 45 minutes later, you seek out your life partner to see how they're doing. I'm going to tell you either you're lying to me about who your authentic self <laughs> is or with intentionality. You must choose the behavior that creates your authentic self. And that's what self-awareness is about. It's about intentionality. The purpose of it is so I choose who I want to be. Who am I? And it, some people think, oh, well, isn't that manipulative? If I'm choosing who I authentically am, it's being authentic to the best possible degree. Yeah, no, I, 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 I totally agree with that, uh, with that, Michael. And I find it, I, I just find it really interesting about the fact that uh, there's so much spoken about authenticity. I'm glad you raised that up, right? Because that just seems to be the latest buzzword. And people say, how to be authentic, how to be more authentic. And to your point is, without self-awareness, you can't, you can't be authentic because you don't even recognize what authenticity is if you're not self-aware. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and how do you measure that, John? Yeah. You measure that. See, people want to measure authenticity through their obstacles rather than through their objectives. So in other words, people, what they want to say is, yeah, I'll tell you what's authentic. My back hurts. That's authentic. <laughs> well, that's an authentic obstacle. Authenticity can only be measured by my objective. So my objective today is to heap as many goodies as upon, upon you and your listeners as I possibly can in my 20 minutes or whatever time you give me. That's my objective. Now, I had three clients before this. One was difficult, two were easy. That's an obstacle. Um, I'm dry today. I haven't lewd my, th that's an obstacle. Uh, your questions, if I don't like them, that's an obstacle. <laughs> my hurt back is an, all those are obstacles. They may be real, but they're not the authentic objective. Authenticity can only be measured based upon what your action is. You know, during the recession, uh, a lot of my CEOs of construction companies said, wait a minute, Michael, you're expecting me to go in all uh, upbeat and uh, mm -hmm. joyous tomorrow. Where's the self-awareness in that? Where's the authenticity in that? So John, I challenge them and say, is your objective tomorrow to make the people left standing? Uh, mourn the people that you just laid off. Oh, yeah. no, no, no. Is your authentic objective tomorrow to make the people left standing fear that they're the next ones to go? No, no, no. Or is your authentic objective tomorrow to make the people left standing produce the same amount of work they always have, if not more, for the same amount of money, if not less, so that you can get your team out of this and start putting food on people's tables again? Yeah, that determines your authenticity and the choices you make that day. No, I, I, I love that because basically um, a lot of the times you hear this, it always seems to be like, oh, be your authentic self. That means you have to be upbeat. You know, you have to be in, it's almost like you have to be inauthentic, you know, but to be authentic. And it's so crazily mixed up. Um, but even in your, in your example there, I mean, it's, as you say, it's the authenticity of the outcome that you're trying to achieve and why you're doing that. And then you have to, obviously, you have to be very self-aware that you're delivering the way you should deliver. Yeah, my background's in acting and people hear that, John, and they think exactly what you just said. Oh, then we're going to pretend. It's fake it till you make it, right? Hate that expression. Mm -hmm. No, it's not at all. Look up acting in the dictionary. Says nothing about pretense. 
Yep. Oh, some Webster's may have it as a fifth or sixth preferred definition. Latin scholars out there, what does acting mean? It's from the same root as action. It means to do, to perform, not to pretend. You know what we call actors who pretend? Unemployed. We don't hire them. <laughs> so it's all about doing. It's about what is my action. And that's why if, if we made a list of all the skills an actor needs in order to be successful, they're the same exact list of things that leaders need to be successful. Adaptability, strong vocal skills, um, nonverbal communication, the ability to connect with an audience, retaining things, uh, creativity, improvisational skills, uh, taking risks. All these things are the exact same things for both actors and for leaders. You have to, with self-awareness, intentionally set out to do those things, to be those things, if you're going to achieve your authentic objective that day. There's nothing pretentious about that. It's all real. It's what I'm trying to do. What is your objective with your family at dinner? Is it to get mm -hmm. through as many emails as possible? Well, then you have your phone on the table. Is it to gather the team together so that we, we go forth tomorrow with common objectives, with a common spirit that supports each other? Well, that tells me what the authentic dinner looks like. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so Mike, what I find is is fascinating here is this idea of intentionality because I do feel that a lot of people allow themselves to kind of be on a somewhat autopilot or just kind of drift um, along or react, you know, just react to what um, situation comes up. So, how do you start to be intentional? Because I feel like it's I feel like it's something that you have to actively choose to be because, as I said earlier, because we're living in this world that's giving you every opportunity not to be. Yeah. What works for me, John, is a morning ritual. I think you have to have a morning ritual to launch this truly authentic, self-aware person. And everyone has to find their their own morning ritual. My dad was a firefighter. So what he taught me was when the alarm goes off, you go. So I never need a second alarm. Gets me in the zone right away. My wife, Peggy, the alarm clock is a suggestion. She's <laughs> neither awake nor asleep. Either get up when the thing goes off or set it later. It seems so simple to me. <laughs> Two, I get up and I do something right away. I move. I dance. Uh, I do crunches. I do jumping jacks. Now, during COVID, that was hard because right next to me on my left, what this left hand is doing while I'm speaking to you is patting Bridie. So <laughs> what, Bridie, when I do any of those things, she laps my face. So what I've been doing when I'm home is I put a collar and a leash on Bridie and we immediately go out and start squirrel chasing. Three, yeah. I pray. Now I'm not proselytizing prayer. That works for me. Some people meditate. Some people do yoga. What do you need? Four, I vocalize. This is my gift. I've messed it up in the past. I do vocal warm-ups every morning. And fifth, when I'm on the road, I call my wife Peggy and have a nice conversation with her. Not one where I tell her what to do, not one where I complain about the hotel, a nice one. And, and what I find, John, is I, if I leave out even one of those five, I'm not me on my best day. Now I have a client up in Portland, Oregon, Dr. Coram. He says, ah, that's all in my head. He said I could leave out all five and still be Michael excellent. Well, you know what? He may be right. Who cares if it's all in my head? If it works, it works. So that's the launching of the day. And once I get in the zone, it's easier to stay in the zone. What I found I needed more of during COVID was intermissions. That mm -hmm. what we forget to do is write in intermissions. So you, you can't stop being excellent because you're with your life partner, because with your family, you're with the employee that's worked for you for 30 years. You're doing the daily team huddle. Oh, no, th those are all important. They all need to be committed to. You need a full immersion when you're doing that. You need to be in the zone. The intermission has to happen when you're alone. Yeah. You say, I need 15 minutes. You go away, close the door. All those other things, you have to be in the zone. And if you live in the moment and really know what your objective is in that moment, Pay attention, listen. And I find writing really helps me, John, to stay there. So if I'm feeling antsy when I write, I've been writing while I've been talking to you. I write things you say, things that, ooh, if I were to coach John, how would I help him? How would I heighten John's self-awareness? I mean, what would I do to help him? 
What does he do well? I'm writing that. Writing helps me stay in the zone. Changing your body language helps you to stay in the zone all day as well. Don't stay in one fixed thing. You notice I move into the camera sometimes. Mm -hmm. That helps me to stay in the zone. Yeah, no, I love that. I really like that. I, uh, I really like what you're saying about being in the moment and staying in the zone and intentionality, because again, like I said, we've allowed these things to creep into our culture now where it's, I mean, people don't even notice, like I could be having a conversation with somebody face to face and suddenly it, there's a ding on their phone and they immediately look down and they, they read it and then they look back up and continue the conversation as if that's acceptable. Like we've, we've, we've taken, you know, we've turned everything upside down. So it's not even impolite to do it. But the fact is you immediately know that that person isn't in the moment really with you during the conversation. Yeah, sure. They're, they're drifting in and out. Have you seen the progressive commercial, John? What's the character saying? Mara, the one with the high squeaky voice. It, it starts, mm -hmm. they're doing a zoom and it starts oh, with yeah. her sitting like this. And then one of the progressive people say, Mara, we can see you're on your phone <laughs> and she does this. <laughs> yeah. No, Mara, we can still see you're on your phone. People make the mistake that the virtual you can get away with things. Yeah, sure. No, you get away with less. Anything that's a problem in person, put an exponent next to it. And it's true of the virtual communication. Now, it's even where people put like people will sometimes put they're reading my materials over here or so they say doesn't look that way. And mm -hmm. so why, why as a film actor, TV actor, I have a little bit of advantage on this. Long before COVID, I was looking at the camera lens because that's where teleprompter is. Mm -hmm. The lines are right there in the camera lens or cue cards are above and below. So one way of heightening that focus on a virtual call is to look right into the lens of the camera. So what people typically do is they do the family Zoom where they're looking at Uncle Harry down there on the left corner and then they talk to Uncle Harry and they think they're making eye contact, but look what you're seeing. If I'm gonna to talk to Uncle mm -hmm. Harry, I gotta go right there. And so that also helps you to stay in the zone. And you can see out of your peripheral movement, stay there, cheat occasionally. It's also how you're perceived by others. What is your objective? What are you trying to do? You're trying to get as many things done in one meeting as possible. You're trying to honor the people in the room so you maximize their performance. That dictates what you do and what you don't do. Yeah. And the other thing you mentioned a, a moment ago was about the morning ritual. And I just wanted to come back to that for a moment because I do think that that's that, that that's something that people should pay a little more attention to, not just your morning ritual, but what are your morning inputs? Like, what do you do when you get up? Do you go straight to the news? And remember, the news is there to provoke, not to inform, no matter where you are on the spectrum of politics. That's what the news does. Or social media, where there's a lot of comparison. So what are your, what are your inputs to begin your day? And are they healthy, you know, reaffirming ones? Or are they ones that could potentially derail you? Well, I told you what my five are. Mm -hmm. What I also do to try to serve the community is I have, uh, I still have a landline, don't make fun of me. I have <laughs> a landline, that's my, my home office line and I have a cell phone. I change the outgoing message every single day. So I do 730 customized outgoing messages every day and I make them available via podcast. So my mailing list, many people, they start their day by going to what my morning message is. It's if you called my two numbers, you'd hear the one that's in the, the video podcast. So I video the one that I use for the landline. So mm -hmm. I video me on the phone recording the message, what everyone's going to hear when they call me that day. So some of my clients have told me that's how they've been starting their day. They listen. One of my clients sent me a gratitude website. So that when my impulse is to, oh, I grab for this phone, well, then I have the, the, the words of gratitude of the day. Better than looking, saying, ooh, what, uh, what am I doing here? It's gratitude. So what's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. So I, some days I just delete it immediately. Other days I look at it and it impacts what I'm going to do. It's called a network for gratefulness. Yeah, my client Nancy in Chicago gave this to me and that helps me. Well, I tell you, my two outgoing messages today, one is it's George Bernard Shaw, 
the great, whom you should know, yeah, came from Ireland. Course. He was born in 1856, July 26th, 1856. So on one outgoing message, uh, he says, life isn't about finding yourself. It's about creating yourself. Mm -hmm. So I put that on. I said, go create yourself today. And the other, it's uh, today is also Mick Jagger's 79th birthday. <laughs> so on my cell phone is a little Mick Jagger. And uh, it's being inspired through Mick Jagger. Anything worth doing is worth overdoing, says Mick Jagger. <laughs> so everything's big. So I, you do, you can't dictate what's going to inspire and what's going to liberate yeah, another yeah. human being. It's very personal. I told you before we got on the call that living on the coast of Maine, when I get up at sunrise, man, is that an informant. Walking mm -hmm. Bridie really sets me in the right frame because I, I stop. I'm not on my phone when I walk Bridie. I look at what's around me. I meet people when I walk Bridie. I look at the nature. I meet Bambi going by me in the path. And mm -hmm. each day is a surprise. And that's what each day should be. It's how we deal with surprises. And then we learn what is it our behavior when we deal with these surprises, what worked, what didn't. Take note, save for tomorrow. Repeat. Repeating is authentic because it came from an authentic moment. That's what a rehearsal of a play is. If I were mm -hmm. directing you in a play, John, I'd find what your authentic behavior was in the scene and would repeat it the next day when we do that scene. What is it that you can discover today that you want to repeat tomorrow that successfully helps you achieve your objectives? Yeah, and, and, and again, Michael, what I like about that is the concept of like, look up from your phone and the world around you and just see what's going on around you and be aware. So it's not just obviously self-awareness, it's awareness of of the world that we live in. And again, people are getting very like wrapped up in, in virtual worlds, but there's a word I have a, my son actually does some acting and there's one, um, uh, production company just did some work for recently and the owner of that company is called roses now. And this was a phrase that his father used and basically was every time you pass roses is you should look at them, and smell them now, right now. This is, you know, don't go, oh, those are nice roses. I must, I must, you know, smell them later. It says roses now. So be aware of the good things around you. And let's augment that by saying we're serving the world around us. So mm -hmm. yes, smell the roses. That's a wonderful gift to ourselves. But then remember our responsibility. We have to be roses to the rest of the world. Michelle Obama said this great thing. She said, be grateful for what you have and be ready to share it when the time comes. Mm -hmm. And uh, for your listeners who are into New Testament, that's really her take on Luke 12. Those of us who are blessed with much, much is expected. But think about it. If you think about what you're trying to do to serve the community around you, that you simply don't make it selfish, you make it active and that you're serving others, that helps heighten your self-awareness and it creates a day interwoven with activities that make a difference in the world, which ultimately fill your bucket and make a difference for you. Yeah, beautifully said, Michael. What a great page to to end on. Um, all of Michael's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, Michael, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. My program is called You and Your Best Day. Thanks for asking, John. And so I am a keynoter. I'm a workshop leader and a one-on-one -on -one coach. And those three things, all based on theatrical directing. I'm a theatrical director, film director, choreographer, actor. All those skills that I've acquired there, I send out to the world to help each person, each group effectively execute their objective. So all my keynotes and workshops are a huge percentage entertainment, fun, laughter with pragmatic takeaways. Always what I promise is that every person when they interact with me, will walk away from the, from the room or the screen with a minimum of two ways to upgrade the way they presently communicate and lead. That's what I do. Love it. The fantastic. So I would encourage you to go check out Michael. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again soon.